sounds like Alex bought us some more time. We gotta find a way to take out that sniper. Yeah. I want the wrong end of a carnival game, mother. That radio. Oz, you distract him with it? I'll tell you head up to the hills, take him out. Wait, hold on. Shouldn't it be me to take care of the sniper? I know those hills better than anyone. Oh, and I faced the animal squad, and I know how they fight. Yeah, I can play Rochambeau for it. I'm gonna go get Alex. Hey, where do you want me? Go to the engine with Z-Ray. In case they attack it, Javi, will you please stay here? Okay, I'll stay put. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And this is Panels the Pixels podcast. This is a spoiler full podcast about Snowpiercer season four, episode nine, Dominant Traits. And the synopsis for this particular episode, Becky? Alex sabotages the track switch computer and, with Layton's help, escapes to Town Hall. Till gets the drop on Ace and uses his sniper rifle to save Layton and Alex from Rat. Melanie reveals the identity of Alex's biological father. Oh, my God. <laughs> that. <laughs> now, th- now, everybody, um, this is the official synopsis from AMC Plus that I took because I, I like to try to do this as proper as possible like when i do it netflix with the umbrella academy when we do sandman cast everything when it comes to that stuff so that was literally straight from amc plus so yeah um let, let, let's talk about that uh reveal of alex's biological daddy <laughs> First thing I'll say about that is poor Alex with her crappy father figures. Um, <laughs> Wilford. <laughs> right. Uh, I almost, I, I almost would have rather it been Wilford. I just, <laughs> I, well, I feel like they were just, it's like, a, I don't know if you ever saw um, uh, Mean Girls and it's the girl that's like, stop trying to make fetch happen. Yeah, you've said that. I feel like that's Nima. Stop trying to make Nima happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's it's okay. It's uh, well, I, I mean, I I was surprised, very well, surprised when well, she said it. Well, to get it out there, who is the daddy? Nima. Okay, is baby daddy. And I guess back in the day, he was cool and not crazy trying to freeze the world and gas everyone. So yeah. she thought, hey, be the father of my child. And that well, didn't work out well. A daughter of a genius or two geniuses, I should mm-hmm. say, at this point. But the thing is, is that it's like, oh, man. Wow. You, you had to have the long haired, crazy, freaky diggy kind of dude as your daddy yeah (laughs) but it shows her smarts but she has her mother's gumption and attitude just like we love within the character Mm -hmm. which is why we get alex as who she is and that's really what i enjoy about it um you know uh, i'm thinking way back and uh a lot of people are are not going to remember the show. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's a show from the seventies, and I'm forgetting the initial title, but it was something ninety nine, twenty ninety nine, and it was a, a space movie <laughs> show, and uh, all those in the seventies would know it and remember it. But it just reminded of how freaky deaky it is. So if you remember the actual full title, let me know and remember, because I'm going off the top of my head. But, uh, oh, geez. Uh, but it is so wild that, that we get this in this episode. It's like, oh, yeah. we, get, we get to baby daddy. Yeah, I was, I was surprised when that came out. Um, and I, I liked after Alex... I mean, it was a bit more of a distraction, but when she went yeah. to talk to him and he's talking about with the name of the episode, Dominant Traits, mm-hmm. um, 
And she comes back to Melanie and she's like, yeah, not my dad. <laughs> hey, honestly, a lot of kids could be like, no, he didn't raise me. I might have his genetics, but I'm, yeah, not, 100%. I, I'm not him. And that's the whole point. And she proves that throughout this episode, if you think about it. Yep. Of her actions. And I, that's what I drew, truly do enjoy about the particular episode is the fact that a lot of people go against what they normally do and are like, look at Ruth, look at Till, look at Leighton. And, you know, uh, Leighton shows his uh, strength in people. Till showing her sh- strength and her love for people. And you got Alex and knowing how to manipulate people. <laughs> right. I don't know if that's for Melody though, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I think that, I think that might be a little uh, Wilford magic, stepdad magic. Um, <laughs> Stepdaddy. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, uh, th- that was the big moment of the whole episode. Mm-hmm. Um Spoilers, everybody. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we said spoiler full. Yeah, it is um, spoiler full. I did like Nima's intro, and I really enjoyed the way they ended it with, you know, he's going on to talk about why he's doing what he's doing and saving the world. And he's like, hopefully we won't need Snowpiercer 879 cars long. I yeah. loved that. They switched it up a little bit. Um Yeah. That was a good way to segue into the episode. Uh, I, I really did enjoy the fact that we do see Melanie wake up at the very beginning. I mm-hmm. thought that was great. Uh, we get Jennifer Connelly back. Yay. I need to be happy. Yeah. And, and I, 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 her being on screen and just her portraying and uh, exactly the characters that I do enjoy that she does. Uh, her getting the note from Nima and showing his admiration for her with the uh the little montage of everything that has been going on since she was out of it at that yeah. during that time because honestly melanie's been away and we didn't it's like it was like oh she's off screen death everybody no she's not she's not she's here she's here and now she's being uh being told exactly what has transpired during her absence and I really did enjoy that. And uh, and everyone scrambling in New, De- in New Eden at this point. I'm reading my notes, so if I sound a little off, everybody. Uh, scrambling in New Eden. And they're scrambling and uh, to get things ready because they know there's an imminent attack at this point. And, but Nima... Nima's thoughts about getting the great thaw moving along is like his main focus. And, and he doesn't Mel- want to hear. He doesn't want to hear Melanie in his ear or anybody else. And he's controlling all the soldiers at that point that are no longer part of the Admiral because the Admiral's gone. And now Nima's in control. He's doing anything he can to justify it's one of those situations where you are trying to talk someone into something. Yeah. But you end up, it sounds more like you're trying to talk yourself into it. And that's what he sounded like to be in this episode. And he was doing whatever he could to justify. Yeah. Despite someone telling him someone he knows is smart and has seen data and whatnot. He just, he's like, I don't, I, I don't care. I got to do this. He's focused is what it is. And that's the whole problem is that when you have somebody who's self-centered and focused, almost like a dictator, like the Admiral himself, almost like Wilford at some point, even though he was more manipulative, he he was more the typical politician. I I hate using politics in this and everybody, but uh, it, it sounded to me that Wilford was always the more uh politician whereas with the admiral is more of a dictator mm-hmm. more than anything and just to give some sort of uh perspective of the two characters in my viewpoints but 
Yeah, it's like now with uh, Nima, Nima is almost becoming a dictator himself in in some respects because he's determined to make the right thing go. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> I hate saying it almost like, uh, you know, Hitler, but I have to make this. This has to happen. Yeah. You know, it's like and then it doesn't matter who gets killed or who gets hurt or including his troops at this point. Right. You know, he's ready to sacrifice all these people to get his point across to get the world to thaw. But will it work is the question. And on top of that, the people want to survive on their own merit. And that's the whole problem is, is that there's this whole conflict of interest and there's no negotiation. It's like Leighton and Nima against each other and melanie's stuck being the uh diplomat in between along with alex as well as everybody else in new eden and they're all trying and it's like like i i said it's just a lot of friction that's going on between these two worlds and uh one is more opposing because they have the brutality and force because they have what they need as far as like a locomotive to come right in and to do what they need. And it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. Uh, you know, I, I laughed at Nima and it's, it's, it's been a theme throughout the show. Wilford did it yeah. a few episodes before, but it's like, okay, you know that these two ladies are against mm-hmm. everything that you're standing for at this moment, but you're going to let them go off on this train by themselves without a guard. And I'm like, what do you think they're going to do? Is he that dumb that he genuinely believes that they're going to do everything that he says without a fight? And it's, I, I don't, I liked Melanie not what at one point backing down and yeah. offering a solution, the quote unquote solution to get them into New Eden and save the people, as many people in New Eden as they can, but also doing her own, her own thing to kind of an F you to Nima. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's a struggle, is what it is, and that's what's going on, and I I feel it so badly. Uh, I I just I just keep looking at Nima and going, where does he remind me of? Who does he remind me of? All right, you Battlestar Galactica fans, do you remember Baltar? Do you? Because he. Re- no, or anybody. Just asking in general. In general, <laughs> I like I don't know if I'm supposed to uh, answer this. The, the, all right, uh, we had two actors that played them. The one in the original series, which was John Calicos, and he did it so he was very manipulative with the Cylons and everything, right? Kind of like with the Admiral, and then he took over at certain points. So I'm seeing like kind of like a systematic thing within show tropes and things of that nature. And he gives me that Baltar like kind of character. He's doing it for the right reasons, but using the wrong purposes to get there and not showing any reason with anybody else. He just wants to keep his focus there. Oh, uh, that is kind of divergent from what the original opposing force was that he took over from. Uh, very much like uh, James Callis as well in the newer version of Battlestar Galactica too, as well. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I, I get that feeling. It's like, oh, I took over now. So I'm going to get my feeling of what should be now of the new world. But I'm going to do it at my own range and my own feeling. Right. It sucks. And it's like, and there's no reasoning within it. There's, they lost all humanity at this point, except for the people for New Eden. Leighton is ready to talk. Melanie wants everybody to talk. But 
you got one other person that doesn't want to talk and Leighton, like we said before in previous episodes, he lost his way because he was only solely focused on getting his daughter back. He's got Mm -hmm. his daughter back, but right now it's just like, I'm trying to save whatever's left of this community and try to keep create this world. But we have this guy who's only focused on one thing and his only thing. And he can't be reasoned with. And that's where we're at with the soldiers at this point. And then we get that awesome, crazy fight in new Eden with the troops. Uh, I don't know if you liked it, but I like the, uh, the action and interaction that was going on within it. There uh, are some moments within it, in that, that I liked, but I think overall it, it really dragged on way too long. Um, it did. <laughs> I do agree. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really liked uh, the whole Till and Oz thing. Um, and they're trying to decide who's going to go take out the sniper. And Layton's like, okay, y'all, while y'all play Rochambeau, which is rock, scissors, paper, uh, I'm going to go do this. <laughs> I thought there was some good, very good comedy mixed yeah. in with the fights and then uh you know hobby kept running off and lane's like would you please stay put um <laughs> no that's not gonna happen not with right? hobby <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good turns out in the end it's a good thing hobby didn't stay put exactly um, but i thought and i really loved seeing getting to see like that those aerial views of new eden and to see exactly how they use the cars to build that town and to connect those cars. It was a, we've gotten glimpses of it, but I yeah. really liked getting the opportunity to see all of New Eden and how it all came together. I thought that was a great. Yeah. Game. The overall image gave me that feeling of a, like a Mad Max and yeah, sort of like, you know, if, if you all remember the road warrior where they had the whole guess, they were trying to protect the gas station or the, uh, the, the gas mines or the gas itself. It, it literally, they, they put boundaries and that's how they did it with the, uh, the, the cars and tracks. And I thought that was amazing. And it, it works out for the community. I, 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 to me, it's something to marvel at. Uh, I'm going to look for a screenshot. Maybe I'll use that for a podcast. <laughs> image <Thank you. laughs> we'll go from there <laughs> i gotta go really deep diving everybody so you make a mark do a lot of work <laughs> you anyhow. love it anyhow <laughs> um nima's little bloody bomb for making the world warmer is uh, uh something that i have in my notes it, it looked like a nuke to me. It does. I, I, I think that was intentional. Yeah. I really hated that scene, but it's one of those things that, that gave me senses of like, uh, I don't know if you remember the Manhattan project that came out in the mid eighties. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kind of reminded me of that. And it was in uh, that movie was in out in 1986. And it's one of my favorite films because where else would you get a like a lonely high school nerd who creates a nuclear bomb and brings it to a science fair right <laughs> in the middle of Manhattan? But that's how it looked to me. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> look at that thing. Oh, um, but I I had to revel in, and be reminded of that. And it's like it made me admire the movie more. And maybe I'll do it on adrenaline cinema in the near future if people are interested in coming on and having fun talking about that movie because there are certain movies that are out there that a lot of people forget and not yeah. to me to plug the other podcast everybody it's just me thinking out loud but it just reminded me of that because i grew up with that film you know honestly i was a freshman in high school when that movie came out but i uh, yeah i'm showing my age Anyhow, uh, <laughs> the uh, the thing was, it just reminded me of that and how it's infancy of like such a bomb to do that. Now, yeah. uh, it, it's and then Nima 
planning this whole nonsense and it could easily backfire on, on him completely at a certain point but you know Leighton and the crew are are working against that at this point I think that the whole because they took their time showing him assembling the core and you know getting it all put together and I think it was kind of meant to make you think about war and destruction and how, you know, there's always someone behind the scenes who's, who's thinking what they're doing is the right thing to do, but, but it's actually wrong. And I think we were supposed to look at that and think ominous, you know, scary thoughts because it, it, it doesn't look like something that's going to save the world. It looks like something we've all come to, to know is destruction. Yeah. Uh, look at from my notes just to, to figure out where to go to next. Uh, do you have anything in particular that you had uh, to- I'd like to talk about Alex um, having that moment with Layton when she's talking about Wilford, I wrote awkward. Um, oh, it is. <laughs> and then uh, when he tells her, you know, he passed away and that, uh, you know, he did it to himself. I wrote, I think her name's Rowan, the actress. Yes. Did such a phenomenal job again, going through such a different, such a broad, you know, spectrum of emotion because that, that was her father figure. That was her mentor. Yes. Yeah. But that was, she knows he's a horrible person and you know, it's, it's, it's a very complicated relationship. And she showed through her reaction to his passing, a lot of complicated emotions. And I, I, th- I really like that scene. Yeah. It's like she just isn't sure, wasn't sure how to feel about him being gone. And she really, unfortunately, because of everything going on, hasn't doesn't really have the time to process it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those uh, scenes where the true emotions come out from the actor based upon the character and that situation that really puts focus in on how tense the scene is and I, I really did enjoy that. Also, uh, I like that we get the call back to why the bombs were there. I know I spent <laughs> the first seven episodes fussing about why the why those bombs are there now. I know. Um <laughs> but I really like that they did use that as uh, a plot point because it gave us more amazing hobby uh figuring out the (laughs) the channel that they used and then not being able to you know how angry the soldier was when he you know nema's all like do it and Mm -hmm. the soldier's hitting the button and nothing's happening and uh it's just kind of like a happy hobby moment so i I really i liked that they referenced those and that it gave Javi another chance to shine. Yeah, the dead switch moment, as I like to call it. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a very good way to think of it. It's like, it's a dummy switch. It's a dummy switch. Yeah, he cut <laughs> the lines, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't got nothing on us. We got somebody who's crazier than you. <laughs> <laughs> And he's not so crazy anymore. No, he's so cool. Little hobby. Good. Thank God for hobby. That's all no, I say. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Josie. Uh, her flashbacks. It was. I'm glad she got uh, a little bit of time this episode. And, and when we get to quotes, I've got a part of a conversation with her and Ruth that I uh, found amazing and uh, I'll share that then but um, her flashbacks and then when she looks out the window and sees Dr. Headwood I I know I say it all the time but if looks could kill Headwood would be so dead right now Um, oh yeah 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 I I think I know what 
scene you're talking about. Um, he's the Russian guy. No, Boki. Boki, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. I did not get the name, and I'm like <laughs> killing myself about that. So, yeah, there was a whole scene with uh, Josie and Boki. At yeah, a certain point that, that I sweet. really did enjoy. Yeah. Uh, that's in my that's in my notes. I just couldn't get his name right, and I was like, <laughs> "What the hell?" It's like that and guy. Then, and then the you listeners are going, "Mark, don't you remember people?" No, I don't. <laughs> There's some people. It's like I just love that guy, the Russian crazy guy. But you know, that's the everybody knows who you're talking about, so it works. Yeah, but yeah, it's like I want to get the name right. You know, that's why that's, you have me. I know. I, that's why I have a lot of people, actually. Uh, people talk sense into Marcus. He does pay attention, but he doesn't write things down 100%. <laughs> so bear with me. But uh, that's why I have great fellow podcasters like Becky with me. <laughs> You're so... Thanks, man. Uh, but, yeah, I, I have to say the same thing. You know, th- there's a lot of things that happen within that. Uh, you know, you have Alex's turmoil during the episode itself, which I did enjoy, but uh, it shows her true colors and what she lived and loved for within it. And that's, you know, uh, to me, that meant... M- more than anything to me um the fact that you know melanie refuses to help nima destroy the world and nima finishes taking the mask off and turns full military oppressor like we already spoke about and he gives melanie the option of either help him take big alice back or he will bury the whole town of Mm -hmm. new eden and uh you know so much for you know few sacrifices <laughs> you know and then as far as we know this half of humanity right here as as we know it uh and then we get melanie you know trying to appeal to the humanity of dima which honestly it's no, not there it's not there he's not there uh those are the elements that i took away from the episode itself and you know it doesn't stop there at that point uh you know the fact that he wants to dump chemicals into the ocean and crap and stuff like that yeah because i like to that's what i like get before. having melanie and uh, name is insanity pulling melanie and alex together mm-hmm. getting a chance to see because for the majority of the series, they were apart, like one train or another. And Alex we, and Melanie, yeah. yeah, yeah, we didn't. get I'm sorry, I switched gears on you a little bit, um, but we did. They we didn't get a chance to see them that together. Daughter camaraderie, yeah. yes. And it's we, it's a that's been a joy, and I look forward to. I know we, we only, only got, got one that episode like left. little snippets throughout the series. If you think about it, I think it would happen what within the past two seasons we only got that in snippets, mm-hmm. and it sucks because you could see how they're related, how they both think, how they think alike. And you know mother and daughter, but they can't work together (laughs) at times. (laughs) It's just like, okay, um, they're opposing opinions, and that's the whole thing. And then I think that's what makes it work out in the end. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's what works out in the end at the end of the season, everybody, because we have what? One more episode? One more. So. That's all my... In the in the in the show, I got a few points, but um, anything else? Anything that happened? Any moments you want to talk about? Well, finally, the fact that Snowpiercer arrives. Yeah, <laughs> it just goes over the track switch like it was nothing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so much for that whole plan that they had. And- in place and and uh you know you get a bunch of soldiers uh, that gets off the train to defend and Leighton and the others just make their move and just take out everybody at that point they're realizing they don't have bullets that was uh 
Yeah, the 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 soldiers did not have yeah, bullets that were like, coming hey. off. They're like, hey, the Ikluka bullets from Heather's. They are <laughs> fake. No, they're they you know actually they are fake to them because there are none. They're blanks if you think about it. <laughs> and yeah, then they get their good... and they get that their asses a... handed to them at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a. Uh... And until making uh, taking advantage and and shows up right on time during that time too is pretty cool. And then of course they make it on board the train and uh, Zonima, ever the snake in the grass that he is, <laughs> orders his soldier to soldiers to blow up uh, the hill and bury the town. It doesn't work because of the. Yeah. Harvey, the the fake click, you know they cut the they cut the lines. So, and uh, you know while the man who froze the world screams out in anger, as we all know, Melanie and Alex escape, and yeah, they're just gone when he turns around. He's like, oh, rats foiled again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rats. It's it's something out of like a cartoon. Everybody. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that, that's literally how they leave us off at that point, which is like kind of a cliffhanger. But honestly, we only have one episode left, and I'm hoping that we get uh, in the first quarter of the episode how it ends. And then after that, how life moves on and continues, because, you know, that's what this is going to be happy ever after <laughs> happily ever I after so. i think uh or how the world is able to survive regardless for all we know maybe nima launched those other rockets in other places in the world and next thing you know global warming happens <laughs> <laughs> like dang it here we go again it's like gosh golly gee darn it oh wait <laughs> is that a whale <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I hope they give us um a glimpse into the future to yeah. see it would be nice to have like um all right uh, i know i a lot of people hate this movie but i'll, I'll bring it up passengers remember that movie passengers Mm-mm. with oh you never saw jennifer lawrence and chris pratt where they get trapped on the thing they're going to like I don't know. It takes like a hundred years to get there, but they nope, sign their no. life away and the uh, ship, they even though they're in stasis and they only can wake up at that time when they show up to the earth or the new planet to revolutionize it and make it prosper for growth. And then Chris Pratt wakes up Jennifer Lawrence and does all this stuff. It makes me think of that. It's like it, they fast forward to that point in the movie passengers and i'm sure those of you are haters are going to be like mark we hate that movie why do you (laughs) like that movie i don't know i liked it but nonetheless uh they were alive for x amount of years and they lived on that ship while everybody else slept and they had children they had whatever guess what at the very end they shoot forward to the end where they show the whole ship full of growth of plant life, vegetation, farms, and everything. All the robots working, everything working for them. And those who wake up going, what is all this? This is supposed to be a ship. <laughs> and they leave a message stating that they lived a happy, full life and everything else. I'm looking for that for this at the end of Snowpiercer where Leighton, or let's say Leighton's daughter, recounts. That's what I want to see. The it's kind of what we would want from The Walking Dead if Judith were mm-hmm. at the very end, stating, "This is the end. This is how what my father had created. This is his story." Very much like from the comic from The Walking Dead, but in this case, with this, I didn't read the comic. Did you guys read the trade paperback? I didn't read the whole damn thing. So, but I'm looking forward to what we get from the show, but these are my hopes and my dreams and don't 
break that and all the glass and make me fall in the sewer with the rest of the trash. But not to rhyme and sound like an overkill song from Hello from the Gutter. But anyhow, um, this is my little heaven, not my little hell, is the fact that we actually get literally that, um, you know, a reflection that everything that they have done has prospered and they created community and a world and it's grown and we get green. Yeah. We don't get ice. We get green. We get farmland. We get animals. We get water. Yes. Sun. And families, uh, society at this point. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking for hopefulness. And that's literally what I want to see at the very end of the show. Yeah. Because we've suffered for so long, everybody, four seasons. <laughs> we already went from the tail end. And we need to get to the front end where it's all nice and privileged. Well, that's one of my final points is I love that they're bringing it back full circle. It started on Snowpiercer. Yes. It will end on Snowpiercer. And Melanie's comment to uh, Leighton when she's telling him storm the train and he's like, I don't know. And she's like, you did it once. You can do it again. And if we don't get to hear him scream one train uh, in this uh, season finale or series finale, I'm going to be extremely sad. But I like that they're I like that they're ending it the way it began. And I'm uh, I'm very, very excited to see how that all plays out. Same here. I'm I'm looking forward to it as well. I like I said, uh, the show started off as dark and dismal, but hopeful. And uh, my whole feeling at the very end of this particular series is that they end it with positivity. Mm-hmm. We don't need negativity anymore, everybody. No. If you want negativity, no. go to the movie with Ed Harris, Chris Evans, <laughs> and everybody else. But that was an interesting take on the actual uh, trade paperback that came out years ago. And it's a French trade paperback. So... I highly recommend it. And if you want links, you let me know. And I will put them in the show notes. Awesome. Or or message us. And I will let you know. Uh, that all lies in feedback. Anyhow, so <laughs> we're going to move on to uh, quotes. I only have one quote, but I'm sure Miss Becky has a few. I don't know what you're talking about. No. (laughs) You go go ahead. You're going to have the most. Okay. Um, First one, like uh, the conversation that Josie and Ruth had uh, and Josie's talking to Ruth and she says, you know, sometimes I just feel like people around here want to minimize the amount they've suffered. We should be using it as a measure. And Ruth says, for what? And Josie says, for the harm that we inflict back. She is, fired up and she's she's gonna go down swinging and uh i hope she gets i hope josie gets a a happy ending because she deserves it but yeah um, yeah she does the next the uh, the next one actually i only have two the next one is a uh, javi talking about moving the bomb and Leighton asked him to move it and javi says that didn't go so well last time but <laughs> i did learn a bit from almost blowing up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I like that. It was, like, it was a good delivery. So I wrote those. Those were mine. Awesome. Well, I only Write have that one. Down. I only had two. I, yeah, yeah. She only had two. <laughs> Usually she has more, everybody. Me, I probably come up with maybe one or two. No, I only got one this time. And I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I'm going to say it out flat out. And this is Josie Taboki because, you know, Becky clarified it, who it was. The Russian guy. He has a (laughs) heavy Russian accent. Uh, Josie saying, "Uh, that's all right. Being immune to pain makes you stronger. And Boki saying, no, 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 it's not true. Pain is important. Tells us something is wrong. And Josie's like, I still feel it. It just feels different. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good one. Uh, It's a good one. Um, it's a good takeaway. 
and that shows the character and both characters and how they mm-hmm. feel. And it's like a learning experience from both. But yeah, I really did enjoy that. So um yeah. But uh I have no additional notes, no quotes. So uh we can move on to podcast recommendations. Anybody? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Becky, do you have any? Um, just the usual. Uh the new episode um, of The Walking Dead, Cast of Us, came out today, and it was uh, really oh. good. It uh, had Lucy and Peter was the guest on it, um, ah. and they're switch, about to switch to uh, Daryl Dixon coverage, and they're doing a recap mm. of season one, and uh, I think they're asking for feedback on what we want to see happen in uh, the next season. Um and then I started listening to spend most of my time listening to interview with the uh, I'm sorry the Vampire Lestat, um, another podcast for adrenaline cinema. Wait wait, a, wait 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 wait! You've been listening to our own coverage? No 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 no! The <laughs> book Anne oh. Rice's book. Oh okay, the Vampire Lestat. I'm, I'm I'm calling it my homework for. Ah. journal and cinema and it's so, amazing oh okay so she's she's doing the audiobook everybody to prep for when we come back with adrenaline and cinema podcast for season three of interview with the vampire which is gonna solely revolve around uh the, the vampire lestat and i'll himself. wait to see how they who they cast and how all, it's it's good yeah uh yeah it, it's gonna be interesting uh, i look forward to when that does come out and we cover it but yeah it's pretty cool that you getting into the audiobooks i highly recommend it to listeners out there as well if you're following along with adrenaline cinema podcast as well as with podcast because that was a collaborative uh podcast with both podcastica and pirate entertainment slash you know adrenaline cinema podcast when we cover an interview with a vampire, we will be back when that third season does come back. So please be there with us when we do it. We will also be back with Mayfair Witches for season one review or bashing, depending on what you think about it. Uh, <laughs> I still have yet to jump into it, everybody, because I got a oh, lot you of haven't homework. Done your binge. I haven't done my binge yet. Uh, I had a lot of work. I had a lot of do a lot of training for work uh, the past week. Got through that. Now I actually have like a solid three days to myself that I actually could do and get some cleaning up to do because my place was turned upside down because I had to put a rack in here, do all this training for what I do for my job, which I kind of vaguely tell you it's home theater installations and stuff like that. But I had to redo some stuff so I could relearn my job or keep my job or whatever (laughs) it is. Anyhow. But I, I, my place was li- literally pretty much me almost tripping over things for a while. Now things are a little bit cleaner. I'm trying to keep it that way. So I'm going to be cleaning. And guess what will I have in the background? Mayfair Witches. And I'll be watching it going, huh? What's going on? Oh, wow. Well, I do love it. Alexander Daddario. She's beautiful. Oh, yeah. They... Who- they- there's some good casting. There's, just, there's a lot of pretty people on that show. I can tell you that. But, uh, but it just I don't know about the story, but I'll catch it on occasion. And it'll be like, OK, well, I caught that part of it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we're going to get into a discussion about that. Uh, I would highly recommend also to talk about podcast.com. Kirk Manley and Jason Capassi also did that on House Podcast for the Marvel uh, TV cast. And they covered uh, Deadpool and Wolverine finally. And it only took a couple of months. Uh, It will be out eventually. I would say give it another month and then Deadpool Wolverine will be available for your digital download to purchase or uh, to rent or what have you. 
and you could watch it then if you haven't watched it already, but they do give their review of it and uh, they gave pretty much the same accolades that I myself gave the the movie itself when Rob, uh, Adam Gonzalez and Frank Rodriguez and myself did for Panels to Pixels podcast here live. And if you didn't catch that, go to YouTube or go back to the previous podcast and you can check it out and listen to your for yourself if you've already seen it. Uh, we had fun. Uh, a little bit of it was slightly bashing, but we had fun with it. <laughs> and uh, Rob pointing me out going, yeah, you didn't want that Wolverine that was like four foot 11. And yeah, I did agree with him. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like Hugh Jackman. Yeah. And we need a tall Wolverine. Uh, the idea of like a Danny DeVito, which would have been awesome, everybody, but we did not get one. Spoilers. Spoilers. We didn't get Danny DeVito coming out with Wolverine stuff. But <laughs> speaking of Danny DeVito, mm-hmm. it makes me think of Colin Farrell and uh, the Penguin, New Penguin show. Yes, the is new Penguin coming movie. out. I am so excited. I don't know if I ever told you, Batman is my oh. favorite of oh, all well. these superheroes and i am i love all things batman so i'm super excited for that are you especially glad that batman got the the star in the hollywood walk of fame this week no way he's the only superhero who has a hollywood star on the walk of fame oh that's cool so everybody News, <laughs> right? Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's really cool. It's pretty awesome that we actually have a fictional character that has a, a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He deserves Batman. it. Uh, you know, we got Stan Lee, we got Kevin Smith, we got everybody else that you know are, is affiliated with comics and stuff like that. But we got Batman. Hopefully, eventually, we get Superman. And who knows? Ewan McGregor actually just uh, received his Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, star as well. So uh, kudos to him and his wife, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and his family, too. And you can see that on YouTube, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to provide links. Just go search for it. (laughs) Anyhow, uh, along with the uh, ideas of what's coming on, with uh, Panels to Pixels podcast, and I already mentioned podcasts. Go, always go to podcastska.com. Check out all the links for all the different podcasts that are out there. Revisited podcast is currently doing, uh, what is it, The Good Place? Mm-hmm. I listened to uh, Kristen and Ben and their coverage for the intro uh, on the way home or on the way back from Manchester, Connecticut, back to where I work in Danbury. And uh, I listened to them and I had a great time listening to it. And I'm, I've yet to watch the episodes, but I, that is on my to-do list this weekend. I'm going to set aside. I'm scheduling myself out, everybody. And I'm going to try to send in feedback for the first episode that they do. It's going to be dual. So keep in mm-hmm. mind, it's episodes one and two because it was a dual premiere. So uh, if you have any feedback for them, please go to Wilhelm.com. And uh, send your feedback there or go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Wilhelm. Or you could go to uh, uh, revisited.pod.com or uh, revisited itself. And then uh, or check that out or the revisited podcast on Facebook and you'll find it. Uh, You'll see it. All the Wilhelm stuff would be there. Ben loves the throw all that stuff out there so uh if you're interested in following along like i am because i've never watched the good place it's so good i watched the first five episodes i'm looking forward to doing Be ready yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna do it episode by episode i have to because uh that's just who i am at times uh also uh keep in mind with pounds the pixels podcast we are continuing our stuff with the umbrella academy Steve and I weren't able to do it this week for uh, episode three, but we're going to do episode three and four together. So once we do that, once he's finished with what he needs to get done, he and I are going to cover those and we will put anything. So if there's any feedback and this is where feedback comes into place. So um, (laughs) 
Well, if you want to leave any feedback, all you have to go do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash pounds the pixels. I leave uh, a lot of things right there for you, like an image and what episode we're going to cover and just leave it in the feedback below. It's also coordinated with Instagram because it's the same place. So whatever you see on Facebook, you'll see on Instagram, just leave them in the comments below for feedback. When that comes out, uh, you could send us a regular texted email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's, you know, you can write out your thoughts and we'll read them. And that way uh, we could comment on, on them and appreciate what you have to say. Uh, that's panels two pixels one at gmail.com panels is spelt out two is spelt out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com uh if you feel the need that you don't want to write anything and you want to record yourself we have these all cool nifty devices out there all you have to do is record yourself and just uh save it and add it as an attachment we'll play it and it says if you're on the podcast itself and uh we'll comment as you're actually talking and it's awesome to play that stuff when it's live and uh also we can be found on youtube so the podcast is also played on youtube podcasts as well as regular youtube feed static feed uh, image is of the podcast and you can watch it normally a lot of people i think we got like 60 some odd views for the last episode that came up which That's was awesome. very uh, odd. And uh, I was like, okay, thank you. Yeah. And I thank <laughs> you. Uh, with that, if you do utilize that, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified once it's happening. And leave a comment if need be. And those comments can be read as well when we're actually podcasting and talking about feedback. And uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you do so. Just as well as if you uh, have some sort of rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Five stars are always welcome, but I always tell people, tell the truth, say how you feel, and also comment in there too. If there's something you want us to change, how you feel, honestly, I've had negative feedback before. I'm all right with it. (laughs) I have Zen. But anyhow, uh, just be honest with it. And I love the fact that we do get some sort of rating or review. And I thank you all for actually doing that, whether it be negative or positive. Uh, Everything is a positive, regardless of it being a negative, because I could work on that. And we all could work on that. Yeah. Including yourself. Uh, not, not, (laughs) Not to be spiritual, everybody. Anywho. But uh, with that, uh, yeah, and I, I mentioned too, uh, you know, we said feedback and everything else. But if you wanted to be part of the podcast itself and you had an idea, and like I said, I stated it before, if you want to be on here, literally all you have to do is email me, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. All it's required is headphones, a microphone. We all have a webcam. And Zoom capability. Or if anything, I could always uh, host a link by the time we actually do do StreamYard and then we're able to communicate. But if you wanted uh, to bring up a topic or show or episode or anything that you want to cover that is within reason, everybody, keep that in mind. Uh, I would love to do that. A movie is is greatly appreciated because there's a lot of Marvel stuff out there. There's a lot of comic book stuff up there. Uh, there's like the uh, what the 1970s Doctor Strange movie. Has anybody ever seen that movie? I want to do the Penguin. Oh, we will do Penguin eventually. Yeesh, lady, we're going to be doing Joker too. <laughs> we got a lot oh, of stuff. Gosh, then- <gasps> That's less than a month away. Exactly. Oh, I'm so happy. It's the best day ever. Batman gets his <laughs> Hollywood whole thing. Yes. Star. And we're less than a month away from the Joker. So there you go. You know, you got Lady Gaga, you got Joaquin Phoenix, and Joker too. Uh, we got uh, other 
movies to really look forward to, like <clears throat> Craven um, <laughs> or Venom. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of others, everybody. Anyhow, we'll be covering them as we go. Obviously, Agatha all along, we're going to be covering that as well. So uh, that is something set as well. So I might be doing two podcasts up until that point or probably next week or three. Wow. Yeah. Umbrella Academy. So <laughs> we'll be doing two again, everybody. Uh, or if not next week, three. But uh, one, two, three. Uh, 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 anyhow, <laughs> not to not to joke about that. Anywho. So what do we have coming up next week? Because <laughs> I've kind of entertained way too many people with my I'm stupid. Sorry. Jokes. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was so good. Uh, next week, we are covering Snowpiercer Season 4, Episode 10, the uh, appropriately titled series finale, The Last Stop. Awesome. Well, that wraps up our coverage of Snowpiercer Season 4, Episode 9, everybody. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Batman. Damn. <laughs> you know to have your cowl on. I already know it's you, Becky. Jeez. <laughs> I've got the glasses on. You can't tell. Oh, gosh, golly gee darn. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This is Panels and Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, good day, good evening, or wherever you are. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.